Hello YouTube, XCT here. In this video we are going to solve Jellyfish, a medium difficulty box from Trihackme, which involves exploiting a PHP web app called Monitor and using Dirty Sock for root. So let's look at the results from the initial port scan. Um, there's FTP, there's SSH and there's a web server. And Nmap found some virtual hosts here, so we're going to copy these and then add them to our hosts file. Like this. And then we are just going to visit all the websites and look for something interesting. So there's this pet shop, um, which is pretty much a static site, as far as I can tell. And there's nothing too interesting here. At the bottom, we can see that this is uh, Pico CMS. So that's something one could look into, but um, I don't think this will lead to anything. There's also this same site with a dev prefix, but it looks exactly the same. Um, no big changes here. Um, there was also this uh, beta site, so let's look at that one. And this looks a bit more interesting because um, it says it's under construction and that we have to put some ID there, but we have no idea what this ID is, so we can't really do anything with this right now. And last, there is this monitor site, which um, clearly is the most interesting one. Um, we can see the pet shop which we've just been visiting, and we can see Jellyfin, um, some kind of software um, running on localhost. On the bottom, we can see that there's um, a link to the repository from this monitor software, and also we can see um, a version here. So let's look at the repository. Um, here we can see that this um, 176M version is actually the latest, um, but it's from 2018, so it's quite old. And if you Google for vulnerabilities, you will eventually find this exploitDB entry, uh, which has an R3E for this exact version. So this is something we are going to try here. And just by having a quick look here, it seems that there's some kind of um, upload vulnerability. Um, you can see the exploit is trying to upload uh, an image um, that actually contains a PHP code. And it wants to start a reverse shell here. So let's download this and look at this locally. So let's have a look at the code here. Um, the original payload is a reverse shell. This is uh, nothing I want to start with because there are many things that can go wrong. So we're just going to replace that with a PHP info call. And also now we don't need most of the arguments. So we can just remove all this parameter handling here. And because the certificates on the box probably won't be valid, we need to add uh, verify equals false here. And one last thing I want to do is add a proxy. So I can proxy the requests through my local burp and um, observe the requests and responses. And this looks pretty good for now, so let's run this. And it looks like this uh, has worked at least as far as the requests go. So let's look at burp. Um, here we can see the first request where it's trying to upload our PHP code. And actually there is something we have to remove here. Um, but um, it says you are an exploit. So this is strange. Why would it say that? Let's look at the repository again. Maybe we can find where this message is generated. So let's just look for the word exploit in this repository. And there isn't any. This is strange. So let's look at the actual file. So this upload.php is the file we've been posting to. And if you look at the file, it's not too long. There's nothing here that mentions you are an exploit or something like that. The only way I can explain this is that the author has added some custom code here, which we have to bypass in order to exploit this. So let's try to browse to the actual site here. And we can see that there's actually some kind of cookie here, which is called is human. And going to look for that one again in the GitHub repository. And it's not here either. So this seems to be something that the author has added. So let's keep that in mind. We probably need this uh, is human equals one cookie. Actually, let's just add it now.
And let's see if anything has changed. And actually, we get a different error now. So that doesn't seem so bad. It now says that, let's make this a bit bigger. Um, it's not an image or exceeds the upload size limit. Um, I would rule out the upload size limit because that's really tiny here. But it thinks this is not an image. So this seems to be something the author has added as well. Um, so I suspect we need to bypass some kind of check. So first of all, let's fix the payload here because this is starting to annoy me like this. And now there are multiple ways to bypass such a filter. Um, we are already pretending to be a GIF, but one thing we could try is to have GIF part of the file name in case um, it just looks for this inside the file name. Let's try that. Look at the responses. And it's still the same. It's still complaining here. So another thing to try is um, we could try other extensions that are not PHP but will be executed as PHP. And one of these is PHTML. So let's try that one. And this looks a lot better. Um, now it's actually uploaded this. So let's try if we can execute this in a browser. And this works. We get the PHP info as expected. And uh, now we just have to come up with a payload that will do something useful for us. So now I'm just going to basically go back to the original payload, um, just with a small modification. We are going to do shell exec here, um, starting bash, and then curling a script from our box that we will execute with bash. This X file is a rash.now.sh shell. I'll show you how we can get that one. So if you go to this website, um, give your IP and then the port, it will generate a short script that will try various methods to connect back to your box on this port. Notice that I used port 443 here because um, some ports will be blocked. Um, this is one that works. So probably want to use some of the more common ports. So let's see, we changed the payload. We generated the reverse shell. The only thing left to do, I think, is to change the file name a bit here because we already uploaded that one, so it will already exist on the server. Let's start a listener and run the exploit again. And that worked, and as you can see, we got a shell here. So one thing I always like to do is to run lse.sh, so let's do that. can see that there's another user called Robin. It seems to be some kind of SSH honeypot. So maybe if he would have brute forced or guessed there, he would have uh, gotten into this honeypot. And the script finished, but there isn't really so much interesting going on here. Let's look at the running processes. There's this honeypot again. But again, nothing too interesting. Look at the home directory. This bash history file, but you can't read it. You can look here at this one. But nothing too interesting again. And this took a while to find. But what you can do is you can look for packages which might be upgradable. It's like looking for old packages. And if we look through this list, we can see that the snap version that is installed is very old. It's 2.32, which is really, really old, like I said. And um, if you've been following Ubuntu vulnerabilities, you will remember probably Dirty Sock exploit. And this is exactly what we're going to use here. So let's look actually at the dirty sock exploit repository to find out if um, this version is indeed exploitable. So already in the beginning, it's saying here that um, if your snap is um, newer than 2.37, um, you should be safe. But as we saw here, the version we have is 
too poor and free too, so that's lower. So it'll probably work, right? So what does exploit is doing? Uh, it's basically exploiting a vulnerable restricted API function in snapd, which allows to run um, commands as root in an install hook. What it's actually doing then is adding a user and putting it into the pseudo group so we can su to the user and become root then with sudo. And the only thing we really have to do uh, for this exploit is we're going to copy this file. And then we're going to get it onto the box. Um, actually, let's get back to dev shm. Just going to run that. And there seems to be some kind of error here. So let's see if it actually worked. It seems to have worked because it created this user. So to actually become root now, we have to change to this user and then we can sudo to root. So let's get a terminal here. Try this again. The password will just be dirty sock, like the username. Now we are in the sudo group. Enter the password again. And we've become root. So now we can basically read both the flags. Yeah, it's root txt here, and the other one I think was in um, in here. Yeah. So that's it for the box. Um, let me know if you want to see more videos on other platforms like TryHackMe. And yeah, see you next time.